All right. How should we? How should we? start this how should we engage this right here i think we should deal with the fact that jabari osaze is wrong about the ethiopian church and the origins the origins of the ethiopian church that jabari osaze is wrong about this i heard him say this again you know there's some of the facts and factors that he mentions but this in the wrong order and seems to be to a wrong point you know, and I've heard him repeat this over and over. I don't know exactly what it is, of course. You know, he's very intellectual, academic, you know, he's a scholar, so forth and so on. One of the young scholars within our community, and we just got to note that. You know, there's some things I do agree with him on. Some points, some very good points that he does make. However, on this particular point about Ethiopia, mm, I don't want to get into other matters, other reasonings. I wanted to stick up to this particular point. He says this again in a discussion that he has with um, Jojo Capone on the Sarnetta platform, House of Consciousness, Sarnetta platform. You know, check it out for yourself, the full of full. I think it was a live, a live that's being streamed actually today on the 123rd birthday, right, of um, Dr. Malaku Emmanuel Bayan, right, the constitutional membership of the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. You know, we're going to have something for... Um, Dr. Malaku Emmanuel Bayan. And maybe it's important that we just touch on, all right, all right, right here, 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 we can touch on this right here. This is who we're speaking about this very day. So that's the day that Sutton at the platform, they live stream this discussion and it was about Ethiopia. So big ups, you know, um, to brother Jojo Capone, you know, world traveler, you know, one of our people who is making that connection with the motherland and he brought up right at the start of the show gotta thank i and i you know i and i isha you know me stay i and i wife you know sister tehetna go to my asphalt because she actually you know will kind of go to different channels so so sometimes when i'm in the king's chamber she's in the queen's chamber you know there's an intervening room and sometimes different you know different youtube's presenters will be played so you know, while I'm working on the podcast or, you know, in our duly elected office as national president of the Ethiopian World Federation in the 2023 year. Notice it's the 2023 year and also the 123rd, right, birthday. You see, 1900 to 1940. Very, very important man for many of us from a Rastafari perspective. We see him as the Emmanuel. You know, many of us, you know, connected with the king of kings of Ethiopia, Ketamawi Hadis Selassie, right? And also being sent, Malaku. Malaku means his angel, Emmanuel. God is with us, Bayan, a judge's judicial decision. He's one of the first, actually, right here. Now, this this right here really is, is something uh, totally different, but perhaps maybe because we're saying that Javari Osazi is wrong, ones might check this out and get to learn a little bit more about that connection of Ethiopians at home and abroad. We the black people here, as we say, the royal order, the Ethiopian Hebrews, or we the black people here in the Americas and the Caribbean. We're all black Americans now. But anyway, be that as it may, <laughs> be that as it may, um, Jabari Osaze, right, is wrong concerning the origins, right, of the Ethiopian church let's just keep it simple like that the ethiopian church so we're gonna kind of come out of this one right here and just stick with this right here now first thing we was going to actually speak about is um tobia right was going to speak about tobe and tobia right the archaic land right or the archaic name of ethiopia you know as we heard jojo you know as we heard jojo um capone come on the side net of the show all right, but we're going to keep this one, uh, you know, a little more tight on the point concerning Jabari Osaze, you know, and we've heard him say this in other discussion and some other ones that also have said something similar. Right. And also to heal up to priest, the Honorable Priest Isaac, you know, Honorable Priest Isaac, the Institute, also Radio Anu as well, because we was on there with uh, Ross Kwame, and we was also discussing this very same subject matter of the origins, the origins, right, of Christianity in Ethiopia. But what he says, what Jobari Osaze actually says, right, 
concerning the Ethiopian church, right? We'd like to let you hear it for yourself. And then in a follow-up vid, right, we're going to do more of a, a breakdown, right? More of a breakdown and a build and just to put things in its, um, you know, proper order. Now, the archaic, the ancient name that many of us argue, um, both those of us abroad, Ethiopians abroad, we have the Royal Order of Ethiopian Hebrews, as well as certain Ethiopian scholars at home as well, right, is that the archaic name of Ethiopia does not originate with the Greeks. In this, in this um, time-space continuum, we could say yes, basically that, that the Western Gentile culture, we, most of us speak in English, so forth and so on. Yeah, and that's our primary, our main language, for the reasons being, you know, what the reasons are for us, you know, as um, black people, per se. However, you know, however, most of what we get comes from the Greco-Roman tradition, and many of us don't, do not have the linguistic, um, you know, um, um, skills or or knowledge and awareness to really be able to fact check a lot of what we are receiving, you know, like translations of the Pur in Peru, you know, the book of the coming forth by day and by night. Most of this is through, you know, other scholars, right? You know, Europeans, mainly Western Gentile, once influenced by white Anglo-Saxon Protestant Christianity, right? And there are some errors that there's many errors that we have come across in our own study even ethiopian documents that have been translated you know we give thanks for the gift of the holy spirit the isla irid that we are able to at least make certain pioneering steps you know of highlighting certain things and hopefully we give and leave enough data you know and points of reference and and, and resources on the record but right here the easiest way to address much of this is often to you know do what we're doing right here you know at first it's like a first you know a first address of it but brother jabari 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 you know what i mean it's very good also what we at least hear a few ones i think also we want to hail up and big up to um brother sanchez brother sanchez you know part of what we did in the previous video concerning you know the globe or the obloid you know earth and all of that and the equator was really for you and you know yours and others of us that are just challenging certain conceptions you know and our challenges are being labeled pseudoscience by some but actually there's a lot of evidence that's been covered up the same thing with the archaic name of ethiopia which is a tobia but to the point that Jabari Osazi made, I think it's best to really just have him, you know, j just to hear it, as once we'll say, hear it from, <laughs> if not the horse's mouth, hear it from, you know, the scholar, the scholar himself. Let me see right here. Let's see. Let's go back a little bit. Okay, here we go, right here. Okay, why don't you hear this for yourself? It's an amazing place that has a lot of amazing history. Um, the first people that we have records for there are probably the Demot people. Demot. Not the folks from Lalibela. Lalibela leaves behind a... Okay, yeah, we're just backing that it off. That does not mean that the Ethiopian church was under the control. Okay, here goes, here goes, here goes. A serial Greek monk. Here goes, here goes, here goes. Quite accurate. That's not quite accurate. Okay, let's go back here. Through the... We don't have the time for us to go through the history of Ethiopia. We should. ...have made their jump to homo sapien sapien in that area and so that is one of the reasons there are some that argue that humanity might have started further south right there's some that make that argument but regardless we have to acknowledge ethiopia's central place in world history right now um i would love to go through the we don't have the time for us to go through the history of ethiopia but I, I, I do want you to understand that um, when we look at Ethiopia, um, there's some things that we know about Ethiopia and some things we don't know about that people have as misnomers about Ethiopia. Uh, I also hear sometimes that people say that um, Ethiopia uh, is the place where humanity, where uh, uh, Christianity started. That's not quite accurate. That's not quite accurate. 
Ethiopia has one of the earliest Christian churches. That is true. But it was um, started by one of the emperors who was converted by a, a, a what can we call him, a, a serial Greek monk who had connections to the Church of Rome. When he needed assistance in um, uh, uh, converting more people in Ethiopia, he calls to the Church of Rome for assistance. So obviously, um, Rome is part of the way that uh, Christianity has its origin in Ethiopia. So I think that that is part of the story that we need to tell. That does not mean that the Ethiopian church was under the control of Europeans. Because uh, very often we later see letters of popes and others in the Western world saying, we should tell Ethiopia to do this, and they mostly just ignore them. <laughs> so so um, th there's, there's, uh, there, there's some truth that we need to tell about the, the about Christianity in Ethiopia, um, but uh, it, it's a it's an amazing place. It has lots of amazing. Okay, there's some more that he says right there, but you can hear full of full. I think it's alive, but no doubt it will be up there, or you can find it. It's a Jabari Osaze a conversation or something to that effect with Jojo Capone. Right, and once again, hail up to Jojo Capone as well. So, right there, right there, <coughs> right there. Um, what's the point? What, what, you know, so so what? What um, are we saying that he he's wrong about? Right, what he's wrong about? Now, first of all, when he talks about the origin, the the Pope, the, the, the not the Pope, but what he said, Rome, the Church of Rome. He calls to Rome, to Rome. Right, this particular. He said, "What can we call him?" You know, well, who are we speaking about? Now, we, this is the details. This is the details right here because it was the Coptic Church, the Coptic Church, right? The connection, right, with Ethiopia and we could say with the state religion. This was also discussed on, on the platform. Priest Isaac, the Rasta Roundtable, Radio Anno, just a day before. This is what was interesting that Ethiopia seems to be getting a little bit more attention amongst the some of the cometicists and the black conscious community getting a little bit more attention you know recently we give thanks to the co-laborers you know who have been co-laboring with i and i recently and even over the past maybe two or so decades maybe 15 you know plus years you know um seeking to get these main points across because of what even jojo jojo capone says there's like tend to be a lot of emphasis on like um what they call kemet or ancient egypt and not so much emphasis right on ethiopia although the evidence would the evidence would dictate Right, you know, if we, if we would take dictation, would dictate that we should start there or we should kind of go there, right? Both, as Jabari even emphasizes, travel, right? And many of them have traveled there, you know, and as a not even a disclaimer, it's not a disclaimer, but because we're doing so much work here, you know, on the front lines here, you know, amongst the diaspora. You know, we have not as ourselves, but the facts and evidence are there, right, to show that what Jabari Osazi says concerning, you know, the Church of Rome. And I say, oh, Rome, and keep saying Rome and Rome and Rome and Rome. You know, I say perhaps it's because he was a Roman Catholic himself. He's, he acknowledged that. It's nothing he hides, but he's a Roman Catholic. You know, was a Roman Catholic, or this is his particular form of Christianity. And it's almost like even in his pro comedic arguments, he is um, arguing just as many of the Jesuits and the Romanists. And this is not a slight so much against him personally, but sometimes we don't even notice these things, you know, because, you know, our, you know, um, experience and circumstances. You know, they can influence us to make us, you know, either who we are or we have to become more conscious as we talk about consciousness. So on this particular matter right here, this was not to get into the details of it, but almost like to put up the red flag and say, hey, 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 you know, the first um, Christians concerning the Ethiopia connection. Yes, we do need to get into the details. And yes, there's a whole lot that's out there. Jojo. 
you know, Jojo Capone, he mentions that. And he's, you know, very grateful and thankful to be, have this particular, you know, the opportunity he has. And it's also still going on. But when we heard that, we was about to address another particular point, you know, concerning the name. You know, where many would say, well, Ethiopia, the name comes from the Greeks, the Greeks, the Greeks, the Greeks, the Greeks, the Greeks, the Greeks. So we're going to have to really zoom in on who were the, the real, the original, quote, strong quotes, black Greeks or African, right, or cometically related or Ethiopian related. Remember that the high so-called god of the commonly called Greeks was Zeus, and Zeus basically is Ethiopes, Ethiopes. Wait, wait, hold on for a moment. Now, Zeus is Ethiopes, <laughs> and even from the ancient Greek, um, what the one calls their myths, their beliefs, the systems that we commonly know today. The original Greeks were the Ionians, the Yawanites, right? And they were black peoples or what can commonly be called, and we're using the terminology today, they would basically put it in the category of black peoples, right? Some might even want to say mulatto, but black peoples, even the mulatto peoples, we know that the whole thing basically is because of the black relation, even with the so-called mulatto, the problem that becomes problematic under, you know, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant inferiority posing as supremacy. So the one he was speaking about was one named Frumentius, right, was Frumentius. And this also is for Radio Arno as well. Hopefully we'll be able to bring it forward on that particular platform and perhaps this will stimulate, you know, us um, following up on our discussion you know, previous, on the previous evening with Radio Anu and the priest, Honorable Priest Isaac Institute, um, the Rasta Roundtable and Brother um, Kwame, Ras Kwame, give thanks as well for that sit down. We was having a little bit of trouble, you know, with, um, or they were not hearing the full of full, you know, of what we were saying, but a lot of it did get on the record, and I'm not too sure if that has been, you know, broadcast yet. So this that we let you hear was following up from, in other words, from our discussion. So you haven't heard our fuller discussion, because some of these same conversations concerning Azana, this all has to do with Azana. Mine all has to do with Fazana. Let's see if we can bring this up right here for you as well. We'll come out of this for a moment. And which suitcase are we going to right here? Now, we have a, a Ethiopia church suitcase right here. Getting into the Ethiopia church. Now, this is a very important book right here. Now, we don't have the back cover of it to show you. This is the reprint, a Lion of Judah Society reprint. And what's interesting here, this book by Michael Geddes. This is one of our first um, points of reference and evidence from 1696, right? 1696. So not so much to kill a bird, two birds with a stone, but to feed two birds with one piece of bread. This is this video, this vlog right here, this update, where we're going to put something to the effect of Jabari, um, Osazi, or is he Dr. Jabari? We're not too sure. Professor, well, Jabari Osazi is wrong. Right is wrong that the it was it was Coptic, not Roman. Right, Coptic, not Roman. Now we know if this is a further discussion, we know some of the weeds intellectually, academically that he might point to, or maybe he's in these weeds himself. Because the only way, way we have been able to avoid getting caught up in the weeds. You know, of this point, you know, like this in the forest and the trees analogy, getting caught up in that is because we can reference things to the original source, which a lot of other scholars have to rely on the European translations and the debate amongst the academic uh, scholarship when they come to a minimalization you know, a minimalization. They, they're minimalists. This is a, a little more of an intellectual academic point. Jabari Osazi might be familiar with this sort of conversation here. The minimalists, you know, looking at historical and Western Gentile, I say Gentile, I say white, Anglo-Saxon, Protestant, namely, mainly scholarship. This is what influences a lot of us and what we first have a lot of access to when we get into more serious scholarship. But this is a book right here that can clearly, 
right demonstrate you so you heard when Jabari said well uh, it's not to say that they were controlled by the Roman church you know what I mean it's like the stages of grief you know like with some anger at first and then there is like um you know what they call a bargaining you know this is not to say right that the Ethiopian church was controlled Jabari Osazi says by the Roman church and he gives an incident when you know the Roman church would write and the Ethiopian church a oversimplification and a miscontextualization would write or, or say the church of Ethiopia should do this and this and this and the church of Ethiopia and the king or whatever would ignore them all right now I don't know at what period he's really pointing to in that um pseudo analogy right there or not analogy what's a better um antidotal he gave an antidotal kind of point of reference but michael gettys this is the back part of the book all right as i got into the record here i said chan i didn't just um get a screenshot of the back of the book so so you can see it for yourself all right so i would say take my word for it but follow up for yourself and you'll see that we're reading from this this is the actual reference but this is the front of the book right here and it's a reprint by the loj the Lion of Judah Society, I and I College Press, right here, Imperial Publishers, here in the diaspora. Michael Geddes. This book is written by Michael Geddes. Now the front part of the book says this. It's a little bit blur right there, but the first part you hear, I read, and then um, it's kind of blur there, but because it's zoomed in, you can see it a little better. The Church History. It's an old book, so the the S looks like an F. You know, you see that right there of Ethiopia, wherein, among other things, the two great splendid Roman missions into that empire are placed in their true light. You see that? Are placed in their true light. All right, now, Jabari Osazi and some of the others that are beginning to talk about Ethiopia, they are presenting certain things that are truth, right, true, right? But then at the, some critical points, like what he said about this, he said, what well, can we call him, a, a, a Syrio... Well, actually, he was Syrio-Phoenician. I think he calls him something like um, the Syrio-Greek, right? Syrio-Greek. Well, that's more or less two ways of saying the same thing from a latter-day historical point of view. But Syrio-Phoenician, Syrio-Greek, um, right? And they said, well, he went to the Church of Rome or, or, or to the Romans or whatnot like that. Now, I think a confusion comes up. No, I know this confusion comes up among many ones when talking about church history, going to European or, or WAS, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant um, resources or, you know, points of reference is because there's Rome, Italy, and there's Byzantium. Yes, it's called the second um, Rome, so forth and so on, right? But that right there is a very critical point. You know, when we talk about Byzantium, Byzantium is what is elsewhere referred to as Asia Minor. Asia Minor is what is referred to today as uh, Turkey, right? The Ottoman Turks, you hear that historically speaking. That's also, there's a big connection of what has gone on and shaped history because of the Ottoman Turks who were under later on an Islamic influence. But these are the same ones from the same region of the world that we have the Hittites. Remember the Hittites, biblically, a uh, tribe of the Canaanites. So we have Turkey, Ottoman Turk, and later on it was called Constantinople. So this is the same region. We'll, we could show a map that will make it a little easy. But these are some of the critical points that anyone who is truly interested in knowing the truth, like placing these things in their true light, really needs to understand and consider. Maybe not all at once. I know I just touched on this and that. And if you're not familiar with this, it's just things you're hearing, but you don't really have like a visual, a picture of it just yet. Right. But I point to this right there because on the back of the book to dismiss what he says. And let's actually play a little bit of what he says right um, here. Uh, uh, converting more people in Ethiopia, he calls to the Church of Rome for assistance. So obviously, that, that, that's, um, that's Rome what's wrong. Is part, that, that's what's wrong. He said, obviously, Rome is part was, of it. Um, started by one of the emperors who was converted. Okay, he's talking about Azana. He's speaking about Azana was converted, right? He says, one of the emperors who was converted, let's go on with that. By a, uh, uh, what can we call him? Uh, he said, what can we call him? No, what is he called? What is he called? Now, what can, we could call him a lot of things, but what is he a called? A serial Greek monk. 
He says Syrio Greek monk. Now we have said Syrio Phoenician, right? Because Syrio Phoenician, for example, in one gospel, there's a woman that comes to Yeshua, and Yeshua refuses to, um, you know, almost refuses to, you know, he says about the children's bread and dogs, and she says, yeah, she's a bitch, she's a dog, and so forth and so on. And it labels the woman a Canaanite in one gospel, but then it labels her a Syrio Phoenician woman. Right. And then when you look into the actual the Greek part of the text, that's the translation I mentioned. It calls her, I think, a it connects her being a Greek. Right. I think it's Greek by nationality or something. We can bring that up. Now, I mentioned that because of all the controversy concerning whether well, Israelites are actually Canaanites. And some say, well, the Canaanites, you know, were black people. You know, some say that and others say, no, the Canaanite is the origin of the white people. Right. So there seems to be a little bit of um, controversy. That's another subject matter that needs to be addressed in and of itself. I'm pointing this out to ones who might want to follow up and to go through a presentation or to have a lecture or a discussion or a conversation on these particular subject matters, which will overlap with other subject matters. But Topically, we can focus, even if we go over here a little bit, because we have to connect a point to get a fuller context of something, we keep it like subject orientated. But go on, Jabari. Who had connections to the Church of Rome. Pause. Now, connections. See, these are very like nebulous kind of terms. Connections. Yeah, you know, like connections. So we, so it's like when 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 the commander says hold fire hold fire you know when the fist goes up you know you know like in that ancient cometic sign that we see that the military does hold fire hold fire for a moment right why because it's blurry there right it's kind of blurry what do you mean that he had connections with rome well i could say brother jabari osaze you have connections with rome or had connection with Rome. You said you was a Roman Catholic. This is how you know Christianity, right? And anyone who is a Christian, not a Roman Catholic, or aware of Roman Catholicism, will say that one who says they're a Roman Catholic is not really a Christian in the Bible believing sense. One can also say that, right? That one who says they're a Roman Catholic may be a Christian because they believe they're Christian, but because of what Catholicism really is and where they where they make their own stance papally from that Roman institution, that they are not really represent the real church, right, within the biblical right sense of it, because they dismiss the Bible. You know what I mean? It says it's whatever they want to say, whatever the Pope says is what it is, basically. You know, it's kind of like a little gangland right there. Now for him to say, well, this um, Syrio Phoenician, I mean, Syrio Greek, or Grecian Greek, um, who converted, who, who's allegedly the converter of King Azana, right? Of King Azana. But let's go on right here. Now, you said there was connections to Rome. You heard that right there. But yet the history says, right, with the state religion, Azana established the state religion. Let's let, let's point this out. This is a point, a big point that we had went into a little bit of detail, you know, with with um with uh, brother um, priest Isaac and Ross uh, Kwame, right? Previously, because we, this is one of the areas that even among certain of the Rastafari, you know, and Ethiopia, you know, orientated brothers and sisters in the Rastafari Ethiopian Hebrew community. This is one of the things that have come up as well, you know, as a discussion, you know, but we see this as a as I, I call it a pseudo point and priest Isaac picked up on it on the radio Anno radio Anno discussion that we had on the 28th. He picked up on that right there. And I had just to clarify that the pseudo aspect of the Azana is when they say that, well, he's the one who made Ethiopia Christian. No, it became the state religion, right? From the state point of view, but it was already this Nazarene, we could say Christina faith, it was already a grassroots, right? A very strong and popular grassroots movement, right? But you know, it's almost like um, something might seem like, like I and I is Rastafari. So in some places, even in Africa, Rastafari is very popular and it's growing in certain areas of Africa. It may not be, 
you know, the Rastafari, say, of I and I, because the Africans, different Africans have their own culture and tradition, right? But it becomes like an umbrella idea. So right now, if there's a president that comes in, right, or a government into an African nation, and there's already a, 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 a grassroots movement, and maybe somebody from outside comes in and persuades him, right? And he says, yeah, you know what? Now it makes sense to me, and that becomes his right faith and his co-rulers and you know azana is a king in fact we have to bring up something here for azana as well we're going to come back to the church history all right so right here we'll use this as a placeholder for azana this is the particular king right that he um jabari osazi another very important reference book because what's what's going to be our references is the uh, ethiopian Tawahido church all right, let's, let's see if we have the cover right here so you can see the book. The book is pretty hard to get because they try to suppress certain knowledge. And this is one of the amazing things is that this is a very, very good book. There it goes right there. It's by um, Archbishop Yitzhak, this particular book, right? So when we're referring to information from the Ethiopian perspective, from the scholars, the, the, the clergy, the church, the in the times, the imperial times, from the emperor, we need to get authorized information that can be backed up because when they say, well, such and such has been said in our records and archives, they point to exactly what scrolls or narratives. If it's something that has been said or passed on, like an oral tradition, they refer to that too, right? And even if it's something that's been anciently reported, when it was reported by who, and there's even ancient documents that points out things that were even said in even more ancient times. But this book here actually has good reference, the Ethiopian Tawahedo Church. So Jabari Osazi, if you can get a copy of this, you know, this book, like I said, it has been suppressed, right? In other words, if you go look at it on ebooks or something like that or if you try to like look at it out there you might find copies that goes into hundreds of dollars right i think one time i saw almost 700 the next one almost a thousand dollars for this particular book right here now it's by archbishop yitzhak yitzhak he is the one that was sent forward to the west right back in the um what was it back in the, what, the 50s? I think circa the time of the 50s, sometime around the 50s, right? And also established the Orthodox Church, right? Amongst the Ethiopian, like, World Federation. Actually, it's because of the Ethiopian World Federation that the Ethiopian Church or the Tawahedo. You see how it's named, the Tawahedo? Other times you will find that ones will call it Orthodox, now, here's where things get lost in translation. This is why dealing with our own scholarship with the linguistic, um, you know, abilities is so very important, right? Because otherwise we're relying on European, you know, and Western and white Anglo-Saxon Protestant influenced scholars, right? Or defending that particular point of view, right? To minimize certain things, right, or to obfuscate them by their academic um, verbosity, you know, <laughs> by the academics. So they use certain things in academics, you know, like when we're reading it, unless you have been aware and you are kind of kind of trained or privy to that, you know, like ones like Jabari Osazi and, and other ones in our community who both... Um, speak to our people on the grassroots level as well as going to college or university and have whatever level of degrees or that intellectual headwork or even just the paperwork are familiar with these terminologies that sometimes the scholars use like many times they have the academic consensus what they're going to put out to the public but when you get into the real scholarship you see that these scholars are still arguing a point that you or me in the public will believe they've come to a consensus on this, so everything is settled. You know, like the date of the pyramids, the date of Egypt, Egyptian chronology, so forth and so on, right? So the Ethiopian Tawahedo Church, 
for the further evidence, we're going to actually quote from these particular documentations, right, to prove that not just Dabari, but others that allege that the Roman, Roman, to imply that the Roman Catholic Church is the origin. That's the propaganda that the Roman Catholic Church themselves put out. That's why from the very beginning, right, it wasn't an ad hominem or nothing like that when we said Jabari, you know, is an admitted former Roman Catholic because he was trying to say, well, he know about Christianity and the Bible and church and all of this because he's a Roman Catholic. See, that that's the exact kind of... Um, uh, pretense that Roman Catholicism teaches our people, not even teaches our people, but but how they get up into our head, right? So when we come into consciousness, we got to confront these particular things. And we're doing this to kind of confront that right here, you know, kind of like to point that out and to confront, you know, at least Jabari or Sazi on this particular point. Now, he might be entrenched in his particular point and say, well, yes, it was the Roman church. It was the, Ro no, it was the Coptic this is the point we're seeking to make, is that it was the Coptic right, church of Alexandria. So even once again, we know that ancient um, Tawi, Sema Tawi, Smai Tawi, the two lands. We refer to two lands in chemical. We know that it's from like the 12th to like, you know, dynasty and more in the 18th dynasty forward towards the fulfilling times of ancient Egypt that the term Kemet was used right, to refer to the land and to also refer to the people. And then later on, it came into the shens of the Sutan Bet, the Sutan Bittis, into the, into the cartouches, into the official nomenclature, the, you know, the pre-noms and the gnomes, the different names, you know, or attributes or titles that various different um, per o, per a, a, like different dynasties, great houses, per a, a, what we say from, from the translation pharaoh or per, uh, per on, per a, right, that they used. So they had, you know, addressed the land as Sema Smai Tawi or the Tawi, the two lands, which corresponds exactly to the Hebrew sense of Mitzrayim which shows even more accuracy in the Hebrew documents if we would focus on the language and the linguistic that the other peoples, the European, the white peoples who wanted to get us into the slave Bible and their perversion, right, of one of our ancient traditions, one of our ancient religions or, or belief systems, right? And this is where that point, he kind of walks a tightrope in what he says. He says this right here. When he needed assistance in um, uh, uh, converting more people in Ethiopia, he calls to the Church of Rome for assistance. Pause. No, no, no. That was never the intention, right, as was recorded by the Ethiopians themselves. Remember that we only know about this, right, because of the Ethiopian testimony. So why not go to the person himself? Why am I going to someone who is talking about what this other person said happened? Right. And never going to that that person who said it happened first. Right. And the thing about the Ethiopians is that they they're one of the cultures like that, like ancient Egypt and like other ancient civilization that kept their own records. Right. Even though language and linguistics might have um, changed or morphed or modified in certain ways or different influences might have come in at different times. Right. They kept their own record and documentation. And then we can also look at what others said. So we're not looking at the Ethiopian perspective. Right. He's saying that he needed more help in converting people. So it implies that Roman Catholics came in like Romans and Catholics came in to help Azana to convert other Ethiopians. That's what's wrong. That's what's false. I, and I'm really surprised that he is still regurgitating this same perspective. But the main connection is, like we said, to his former, as he says, he says his former, former Roman Catholicism. So obviously, um, Rome is part of the way that uh, Christianity has its origin in Ethiopia. Pause. Stop. Stop. No, that's that's not true. That's not true. Because even from the biblical perspective, right, this is the same book right here, even from the biblical perspective, which 
in any um, uh, historical um, court of, not just law, but court of discussion, according to the laws of, you know, um, the academics and history. One might not like the Bible, have whatever ideas about the Bible, but there are more documents, right, for the Bible, right, than there are for Roman and, and especially Roman and Greek history. I'm talking about documentation, manuscripts. That's a whole other thing, the number of manuscripts that there are. So he's implying that it was the Roman, you know, the Romans that helped to get more converts in Ethiopia. How dare you, man, for real. And he flies right over the, the, the Coptic church, right? The Coptic church, Right, the Coptic. I'm talking about the early. Let me let me say this in another way of saying the early Coptic Church, right? Because we're talking about something that has about roughly almost two thousand years, right? Roughly two thousand years of history. So there are different periods, there are different changes that have gone on, right? In many of these belief systems, you look at it in Protestantism. There's a lot of different changes. Even in Roman Catholicism, there's a lot of different changes. Now. Let's say this right here. Let's ask a question just to further prove this, right? This point true. He says that it was the Roman church, right? So let's ask a particular question right here. And we had to look up just so we can get some visuals right there. Um, when did, right? See, the Roman church want to say, well, let's, let's go ahead. When, when did Roman church, right? Right, when did Roman... Roman church began. How come this thing is not is not going on? Let's see. You, you see that right there? When did Roman church begin? I don't know what what's up. Made my connection. When did Roman church begin? Right? As a branch of Christianity, Roman Catholicism can be traced. You see how the language change up? Can be traced to the life and teachings of Jesus Christ and Roman occupied uh, J Jewish Palestine about 30 CE. According to Roman Catholic teaching, each of the sacraments was instituted by Christ himself. Right? <laughs> so you can see right here, and this is from Britann Britannica.com, Roman Catholicism. This is what they, you know, put out. Now, they say, who started the Roman church? Look what it said. You see the difference? We looked up when did Roman church begin, right? Let's take another just screenshot of that. When did Roman church begin, right? And then the people ask this. People say, um, who started the Roman church? They say Emperor Constantine I established the rights of the church in the year 315, right? So this is the Roman perspective. The church as we know it and call it. The first church was actually the tabernacle in the wilderness, right? Yes, it didn't use the term church, but we can trace that by Acts of the Apostles where Stephen is saying, and the church in the wilderness, because it's a congregation, a gathering, not a building, but a gathering, a witness of people, right? So the real church, right, began with Yeshua, he says, upon this rock and, and my church and two or three, to you know, two or three come together in my name, I'm in the midst. That is the church. The church was among the disciples. It was the Nazarenes, the congregation. The Hebrew would say the Kahal, the Kahal or the Kahila, right? The church or the congregation, right? That's what church really means. The term church is actually a later day word coined in the Frankenstein language of English. It's a later day word. If you look at the etymology of church, when this word church, you know, first, because we're looking at translation, but then we're saying, well, even based on the translation of church is saying when, where, where people come together to gather, then it already points to the first church was the church in the wilderness was a Hebrew institution. I point that out because in the time of Yeshua, Hanotri, Jesus of Nazareth, called Jesus Christ, right? That first church was a Yehudi or Jewish, and one might say a black Jewish group of people. This was the first church, right? According to the scripture and according to all ancient historical accounts. But the Romans, Roman Catholics, and those who were Roman Catholics, 
may have been unconsciously influenced like Jabari Osazi, right, to just give Rome credit for everything and almost to always believe, right, their point of view, right? Because what he says in the audible that I've let you, you know, I, I've shared, you know, and this is for um, like fair use and you just got critique here, you know, or respond to that, hopefully to have maybe a little fuller of a discussion. So I think that that is part of the story that we need to tell. That does not mean that the Ethiopian church was under the control of Europeans. See, 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 see no, no, no. now here he implies that the Romans, right, Romans, almost like the Romans equal Europeans, right? The Romans, in a sense, equals Europeans back in those days. It's like it's thinking that, that, that Greek, notice what he says. It was, who was this guy? He was a Syrian. So the Syrians are Romans, right? And the Ro and, and, and therefore the Romans are Europeans. So therefore, according to this logic, the Syrian, the Syrio-Greek one, the one Frumentius, he obviously, according to what Jabari is putting forward, was a European. And that is to say a white person. See, that's the next problem that we have because people are stuck in this 400 plus year, this nonsense of, um, you know, racial ra racism and this whole race thing that, that white, latter day white people invented this thing. This thing did not exist prior to. We're talking about cultures, we're talking about ethnicity, we're talking about nationality, right? And nations, right? We're talking about a whole different thing because if we look even into ancient Rome, we can show a very heavy influence of melanated people even people that would be called black or african right to this very day same thing with greek and greece we see the ancient greeks or actually the ionians as they were called see some scholars will be honest and say they were ionians others will call them minoans some would just throw them into the the white scholars throw them into a basket to give more credibility Right to to pre-white history that was not white, right to pre-white. This is the same thing with the argument that Jabari Osazi is making, right? You know, concerning you know the disorigins. You know, he's not he's not orientating himself correctly because of the influence of Roman Catholicism that basically says as containing Christianity, everything begins. That's why you'll notice that people who are Roman Catholics and aren't, aren't really conscious. Right of of what they have been unconsciously programmed into, will always think that if they were Roman Catholic, everything began with them. Christianity began with them. Everything began. You can see that coming from the Roman Catholicism page on Britannica, right? And then here they'll say, well, who started the Roman Church? Right? Actually, it's the Byzantium Church, right? That some say, well, it was the Eastern Roman Empire, right? You know, that right there is a whole other argument in itself. But the point is, we're not talking about Rome, Italy. We're not talking about Rome, Italy. Right? We're speaking about a whole... It's almost like looking at all black people to be the same black people. Right? And, and therefore dismissing... Like when people say Africa, Africa. What about all the different cultures, civilizations? Right? You know... We're not a monolith like that, right? Even though in ancient times we can see where it came together like a pyramid, these different blocks, but it's not just one block in that sense. How old is the Roman church, right? Look what they said. They said that the Catholic church is the oldest institution in the Western world. It can be tra it can trace it. So that means the Roman Catholic church, basically whatever the Roman Catholic church says, is what they regurgitate. This is what's happening. When the Ethiopian church says, well, no, this is our origin. Say, nah, nah, uh, 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 uh. No, your origin, what we tell your origin is Ethiopian church. This is the same thing the Romans were seeking to do, right, with the Ethiopian church, right, when they encountered the Ethiopian church. There is, there is a gulf, a gap, right, of, of, of more than a thousand years right, between the Ethiopian church, right, and the Roman Catholic church, right, and anyone who really seriously studies this, that's why I pointed out the two books, Church History of Ethiopia, in fact, on Church History of Ethiopia, let's just 
quote the back of the book right here, Church History of Ethiopia. In this Church History of Ethiopia, let's let's just do this right here for a screenshot because, you know, so that we, you know, um, when did, look at this, when did Christianity become the Church of Rome, right? That's what we're talking about, right? When did Christianity become the Church of Rome? You see the date? In 313 A.D. Uh-oh. It went in 313 A.D., the Emperor Constantine issued the Edict of Milan, which accepted Christianity. Ten years later, it became the official religion of the Roman Empire because what was being practiced formally by those who later would be called Christian, right, was regarded as like a revolution, like a, as a terrorist group or a revolutionary movement. Right? This is what a lot of ones and ones, you know, don't want to really recognize. And then we see pictures like this. Yes, with a lot of dark faces. Right? Dark faces. Right? Black faces. You know, and this is where pictures like this also, you know, pictures like this come along. Right? And when people say, ah, ah, ah. No, it's not like that. And they want to lighten it up. Right? Let's, let's do, do church history. Church um, history. Right? history of Ethiopia. Hopefully I can get the back of the book because we'd like to be able to show you this for yourself and not just read it and people will say, well, that's not what, yeah, there's PDFs you can get of that. Um, let's see, um, Geddes, Geddes, yeah, it's, his name is Geddes, Geddes, right? And I just put the LOJ Society because I know that we reprint this book. It's a, so you see the book right there, that's the 8, 1690 six book line of judah society lojs.org right there right this right here also let's get a, a shot of this because people need to be able to you know cite this there's pdfs of it you can see the pdf right there you know make sure ones you know are able to download that i think this is one that has like a better a better um you know a better translation of it not translation but you know the old script Let's see if we get the back of the book right here. Here's some of the LOJ books that we have. All right, this is the book. Let's just grab a better copy of this. This is like research on 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 you know on the road, you know, as we you know go through it. Yeah. Let's see, Lulu. Okay, maybe the Lulu Lulu might have the front and the back of the book, or that might be on the. Let's see, that might be on the Amazon. I think if we have it on the Amazon, my right? church history, let's look at this again. Yeah, because the back of the book, we basically cropped the back of the book. Let's go to this right here. Yeah, we cropped the back of the book from the, we composed the back of the book based on what was actually written, right? Okay, there we go. It's like $23, right? There's a YouTube about it. There's the media sabda.org where you can download it. Okay, there's someone else has a print of it for forty four dollars. Our print of it um, is um, this price uh, twenty nine. We have the price here twenty three twenty three sixty two. Right, so you can get a better uh, if you want to get a hard copy. You know, a better price on a hard copy right there. Others have the hard copy from ten to twenty dollars more. You know, from ten to twenty dollars more. So here we just have the black cover, the academic, you know, the old academic cover right here, here, here in the true light. Okay, let's see what we got here. Okay, line of Judah books. All right. Internet also archive has it there if you want to just read it online. Just make sure that we are able to give people, you know, a free choice of this so ones can say they don't have access to see what we're talking about right here, right? So this is the book right here, right? This is the cover of it. Don't have the the back of this available right here at the present time. So let's back out, uh, out of this, not to take up more of your time, people. Give thanks. Just want to show some of the, you know, the works, you know, and some of the history. Right. History of the Catholic Church. So we can compare, you know, histories right here. So here's what we find to be interesting. Who started the Roman Church? Constantine. Right. In 315. They said, how old is the Roman Church? They try to say, well, it can trace its history. It, I mean, it traces. Well, all Christians can trace their history back to Yeshua or Jesus. 
All right, what is it special? Here they say 313. All right, so we have 315, 313. Now concerning Azana, right, concerning Azana, let's bring this up over here. Concerning Azana, right, let's go down here. All right, but remember we have the Ethiopian eunuch, right? You know, where we really get the roots of what the Ethiopian claim. The Ethiopian claim, or those in that territory historically, you know, claim that from Old Testament time, right, they had Israel and Hebrew connections from the Old Testament times, right, from Old Testament times. You know what I'm saying? So it says right here, um, notice what it says right here. It says, Azana the second of the Aksumite Ethiopian Empire became one of the first nations to become a Christian state in 330 A.D. So even this date sometimes is disputed, but there's coinage and other things so we can follow up and get a clearer. But this is a 330 AD, one of the oldest surviving Christian nations in the world. Several Christian monuments date back to King Azana's time, such as the Ta'aka Mariam, the Cathedral of St. Mary of Zion, one of the oldest Christian cathedrals on earth, which existed nearly 300 years before Islam. Get this, and 700 years before Christianity was brought to Europe by North African missionaries. Wait, 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 wait. What, what's going on? So Christianity is brought to Europe. Uh-oh. See, Christianity, yes, we have a Roman province, or uh, Judea became a Roman province. The hood, the hood was on lockdown by the Roman popo, by the Roman, you know, police and, and all of that. It was police. It still was Judean land, so forth and so on for a time before 70 AD, right? Then they're trying to say, well, the Roman Catholic Church can trace this, get that language, trace its origin. Doesn't mean that that is its origin, but it basically says, like, if I'm a Christian, I can, say, I can trace my origin all the way to Yeshua, all the way to Jesus, to Jesus Christ, Jesus of Nazareth, right? I mean, we have coinage from even that approximate time. But what they're trying to make Azana out to be, according to even what Jojo Capone was saying, you know, like some sort of a weak like he was a weak leader. He was he was forced by the Catholics. Like I heard another pseudo argument that the that the Romans were forcing them. You have to dismiss and strike out that Roman stuff. Mm -hmm. Because at the time, right at the time, Christianity, right already, or, or the or the faith in Yeshua of Nazareth, the Nazarene movement that was called Christian by the Greeks. Right, had already, you know, been making inroads all into parts of Africa, especially East Africa, Egypt, Arabia, long before. Look what it says. And 700 years, right, they say, and 700 years, right, before Christianity was brought to Europe by North African missionaries. So we really have to ask ourselves, so when you talk about Constantine, it's not talking about so-called, quote, Rome, Italy. It's talking about Byzantium, that the Western European scholars like to say, oh, that's Rome, too. That's Rome as well. That was Rome, too. Even though there was a schism and a big difference and more of an influence from African Shemitic people, right, in Byzantium than there was in Rome, Italy. I mean, if we were really going to talk about these matters and keep it, you know, right and accurate, right? So we let you hear it, you know, for yourself, right? We let you hear what Jabari says for himself because we don't want to... Because wanna... uh, very often we later see letters of popes and others in the Western world saying, we should tell Ethiopia to do this, and they mostly just ignore them. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, th there's, there's, uh, there, there's some truth that we need to tell about... The, the, about Christianity in Ethiopia. Now, 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 that, we agree with him. He's right on that, some truth. And you get some half-truth. So I just say this, uh, Jabari, there, there's, a, there's a some, and maybe I'm being generous respectfully, there's some, you know, there's too much half-truth in what you said. You, you point out some truth, you use about to really land on some truth, but it's almost like that plane didn't really land, it landed, but, you know, 
with error. You know, like when they have on the internet, like a page loads, right? And you look at the bottom, remember the old web pages, you look at the bottom and says it loaded with errors. Like it's it's been loaded, but there's some errors. That means it's loaded, right? It's loaded. Here's what Michael Geddes in the back of the book right here, the Church History of Ethiopia, 1696 AD, a rare book, true historical account. Right, it says, there are many narratives and stories of both the church history of Ethiopia, past and present, true and false, that have been circulated and given credence to for better or for, and for worse. However, this document, church history, it's about the church history of uh, Ethiopia, this document, right, this document testifies to a, this is a quote from the book from 1696. Right, which is also referencing evidence, right, that is hundreds of years even earlier, hundreds to to maybe almost a thousand years. Remember, this is like 1696, so hundreds, going a couple of hundreds, and even to a thousand year if we now connect the real origins. You know, like if I if I ask him, well, what's your origin of Kemetic consciousness? What was the origin to the Jabari? And he says, well, it was this and this and this. And I said, no, 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 uh, 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 uh. it was actually this over here. It was something else because I did my own research and your origin wasn't like that, right? You, you know how preposterous that would be, but this is the same very thing that even many of our, you know, um, more erudite scholars like Jabari Osazi and others, uh, also Jabari, um, um, I just Jabari, um, but but um, there's some Garfield stuff. But Garfield, you know, it's interesting where he's at in his own scholarship. You know, I think it's like, I guess it's, what, ever evolving? You know what I mean? But there are some historical points and facts where he was off too. But I think he also holds to this idea like now King Azana, he's a boogeyman. He was forced by the Romans, right, to accept Christianity at gunpoint. We've heard that sort, not gunpoint, but at, at sword point, you know, at, at, at knife point, you know. Instead of, we hear every narrative about how the Ethiopians so-called became Christian or Christianity, except, right, their own narrative, right? And the true narrative when Ethiopia became, or, or when Christianity came amongst um, east of the river now. I'm going to say it like that because this is a bigger point here. East of the river now. Notice the, the, that there's a part furthermore when he asks him about these rivers. Let me just, just sum up um, what he's saying right but, here. Uh, it's, a, it's an amazing place. It has lots of amazing history. Um, the first people that we have records for there are probably the Damat people. Damat. Not the folks from Lalibela. Lalibela leaves behind amazing structures, but we should believe that the Damat people were the first people to do lots of things in that region. Now, here is also a big question mark because here's when European scholars try to late date. He's basically going according to what a lot of the academics, you know, a lot of what the academics basically have 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 argued. This is like an academic consensus. He's presenting some of the academic uh, consensus, you know, the academic consensus um, rhetoric. You know, a lot of this is academic. We've gone over it and a lot of, you know, our research as well. But anyway. And we could possibly also argue that... You know, all this could possibly argue. This is exactly what the academics, the Western white academics. So as an academic... Um, Jabari Osazi, yes, and being a black, you know, black man, you know, one of us in that sense right there, and a black American, you know, Afro-American, yeah. Basically, he is on that level there, but he is almost like regurgitating their argument to us. Basically saying, well, well, their conclusion is the only conclusion we can come to, and therefore, that's how they talk. This possibility, it may be, we could believe this, and we may argue that, it might not be the right. The people were taking journeys to where Ethiopia is, and that... No, no, pause. The, the, the Kemetic people, or the Tawian, the Smai Tawi, the, the people of the two lands that's called later on Kemet, they point to their origins as being... You know, um, the origin of the waters, the mountains of the moon, 
right? Going to the Ethiopia and even some say deeper, right? Deeper, we could say continental regions, right? See, we're just showing you on the screen right here, like the whitewash, what has gone on. So on the, on the left hand, when Jabari talks about, you know, what he's talking about the Catholic Church, this is, that's what that represents. On the right hand, right, is the most true, accurate, indigenous representation, right, from ever since the time of the Ethiopian official called the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts chapter 8, which they try to minimize as legendary, but it, this is where the greater point comes in. If we include right the argument or the evidence no not even the argument just the evidence of the ethiopians when we say ethiopians we're stretching this term to 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 upper ethiopia and lower ethiopia or to lower kush the Meroe candese region and upper kush because some would try to argue and say that well kush my, well, Kush is just the Meroe. That's the way a lot of scholars are trying to argue that way. Like he said earlier in his reasoning, he says about, you know, how other scholars would try to claim that, say, Kemet was, was not black African. And then other European scholars say, uh, 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 how can you say that? And they'll present other argument, other evidence, which many of us pick up on that other evidence because it's not what the academic consensus is about. I'm saying he's fallen into that same trap, right? So to speak, with the whole Ethiopia origin being wrong, right? It would seem today with what we see going on today, but today, after 1975 to the present time, Ethiopia, the church, and the the identity, in a sense, is in crisis. And, and many of us attribute this to the godless and creeping coup. You know, again, it's his divine match, the conquering Lion tribe of Judah, those events there. You know, so when they overthrew, right, the, the emperor, so to speak, right, when they rebelled against the emperor, Haile Selassie I, the lion of the tribe of Judah, they also rebelled against God and the church. And we see ever increasing this Roman Catholic Caesar Bogiers, Lucrezia Bogiers iconography, replacing that which was pre-extent. And I say pre-extent because many of our own black Afro-American scholars, you know, like the Hansburys and, and others, were already speaking about this and documenting this. They were also academics. We had academics, I'm talking about real scholars, right, prior to even the Dr. Ben's. Most of them think like Dr. Ben. Well, Dr. Ben brought emphasis on, on black, so-called ancient Egypt, Kemet, Smai, Tawi, yes. You know, and a very good one book he did on We the Black Jews. That right there, though we would have liked to have more, but based on, you know, some of his deficiency. You know, he, he didn't know Hebrew. He didn't know Amharic. He didn't, you know, he wasn't a linguist. So, and then he wasn't taught these things, you know, because of his background and everything else. But he did compile research from a very important time and history from like the 30s, you some from before, from the Ethiopia connection all the way up to the 70s or 80s. You know, that particular book, We the Black Jews. You know, so that document, based on that document, you know, um, we don't trouble him no more, but we do trouble his, 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 his uh, so-called students, right, that try to avoid those things that he actually said or try to reinterpret it, right, because it was never highlighted then, but we are highlighting it now. Right. So take a look at this right here on the screen right here as well. This is part of the crisis that has come in. Right. This is part of the crisis that has come in. Notice on this picture right here where right, they have that one that they put the whitewash. Lucretia Borgia is what they superimpose on the people. And even there, they even have a black Madonna that the so-called popes. Remember when they had the two popes? And everything we're summing up we're coming to the fulfillment of this this time space continuum right here you know but just a little bit more on what he is saying right here and this is why we support this campaign rastafari tv right check out rastafari tv you know and give thanks to the matriarch for nice sunlight but here a little more of jabari Area. it's possible that eritrea um around there is where the civilization that the Kemetic people called Punt or Puanit was. So this is one of the places where we see humanity 
um, first come out of the primordial mist, and that is a very important reason. And you should actually visit Ethiopia. You must visit. It's one of those places on the continent you got to go to. It's one of the places on the continent you must go to. Um, in terms of amazing structures, we could even talk about the Great Enclosure in Zimbabwe, Brother Jojo. I don't know if you've seen that yet, but the Great Enclosure, I mean, we're talking about three-story structures of granite, right? And the thing that I find interesting is in almost all of these great um, civilizations, there are stories by Westerners and others saying they weren't started by Africans, in almost all of them, there were Westerners trying to say, Europeans did this. And then some other Western scholars said, how is that possible? What you're saying doesn't make sense. So that is that is the reality that we face. There there are, were scholars that said that the great enclosure of, of, of um, Zimbabwe was done by Europeans at one point. I'm going to show a picture of, of part of the great enclosure. Let me see if I can do that. And don't forget to name them five lakes if you get a chance. I don't know if I... <laughs> now, what, what what Jojo, Jojo, you heard Jojo right there. Jojo said, uh, remember to name them five lakes. It's kind of so interesting that instead of, you know, just going to the scripture, to the Bible, ones want to walk around it because from a Western... Gen our experience out here in the Americas has really adversely affected a lot of us as black people. You know what I mean? Um, myself, I'm, I'm, I'm not discluding myself, you know what I mean? But some of us have kind of like, um, know that we can beat them, we can defeat them, you know what I mean? So we have to confront it. A lot of ones are trying to kind of run away from it, right? Um, but if we're talking about the rivers, right, we're talking about the rivers right here. Let's, let's go right here. He's speaking about this part, right, in Genesis, Genesis 2 and 10. Because, see, many of the Jabari scholars and other, other ones would dismiss, you know, right, by and large, the biblical account, like as a kind of a fictional something. Because this is what the same European scholars that he is deriding concerning Kemet are the very same ones, right, that do the same thing to Ethiopia. So when we say, hey, that's not true, they reinforce many times, not all the time, not all, not all, but many times they reinforce the same bias that they have towards, we could say, the Ethiopia, the Tobia point of view. And the Tobia, Ethiopia point of view, right, has more of an historical account. Like if we dismiss what the people them themselves say and write and have communicated, why are we dismissing the Ethiopian testimony? Especially since even much of it is based on pre-extant writings. And even if we don't find the very first writing of this, we find there's a tradition of copying writings because in the Ethiopia re region, uh, manuscripts don't last as long because it's not a dry ass, you know, like country like the Kemet. The Kemet's dry. You know, they... Notice that even the soil, the, 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 the Kemet comes from Ethiopia itself, come from the mountains of the moon. So the brother is asking about these particular rivers and you hear... Off the top of my head, I, and they have different names too. There are, were scholars that said that the great enclosure of, of, of um, Zimbabwe was done by Europeans at one point. I'm going to show a picture of, of part of the... See, now he tries to take it to another point. I, I, of course, he'll, he'll argue differently, but... We've heard him do this, and he is he's very good at debate techniques, collegiate academic debate techniques. And sometimes they slip in, even in discussions. But it is a way to communicate what you want to communicate. But many of us, we hear what is not being said. Great enclosure. Let me see if I can do that. And don't forget to name them five lakes if you get a chance. I don't know if I know them off the top of my head. I, and they have different names, too. You see, <laughs> they have different, do, do you know the different name? Do you know their the, the real names, their pseudonyms or any other names? Give us, a, give us a name. They could have gone to Genesis chapter 2, verse 10, and a river went out of Eden. Now, notice how the Bible says we look at Eden, right? Eden to be the, 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 the Afro-Asia. We call it Afro-Asia. The Eden is the Afro-Asia, Africa and Asia, right? Mainly Africa is that Eden, right? That, 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 that Eden aspect, because it says, and a river went out of Eden. 
Remember, it's the garden eastward in Eden. Get it? And we're talking about East Africa. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from thence it was parted and became four heads. Right? Became four. So when he says five, he's probably looking at there's the river that went out and how it parts and becomes four. Right? That river. Right? We can go into a little more detail. We've been researching this. This is a very, very, the brother touched on some of the key points. I'm thinking that, well, many of them are going to say, yeah, we need to do this. We need to do this. But from what I heard, they're not able to really do this. They might present a history of, you know, Ethiopia or whatnot, but that's going to be based on academic reductionism, you know. And it says the name of the first is Pison. That is it that compasseth the whole land of Havila where there is gold. This is from the, we could say the biblical view which Ethiopia testifies to in B.C. times. We're saying in what B.C. time. When I say Ethiopia, I'm including the whole horn of Africa region, not just the artificial borders we see on the map today. I just want to make that point. We're going prior to this latter day time because prior to they're talking about Ethiopia and the places that they name, right, includes a greater Ethiopia region, right? But here is a biblical connection. The gold of that land is good. There's a, there's a land of the good. It was, you saw at the beginning of the video, we show like the land of Tob, 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 Ethiopia, 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 Ethiopia. We're actually speaking it in the Hebrew sense, right? That Hebrew, remember Hebrew is an African Shemitic language. So our roots as black people go old and they predate European minimalism and reductionism. There is Bedellium and the Onyx Stone. The name of the second river is Gihon. The same is it that compasses the whole land of... Here they have Ethiopia. Now there's a whole reason for why we have Ethiopia here, but the underlying term is Kush in the Hebrew. Kush, right? Kush. And as you can see down here, right? Kush. Right, they say also of an Israelite. So the Israelites are African Shemitic people, according to the real historical fact. Everything else is just a whitewash, and you know, yeah, y'all y- 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 should be familiar with that. So the Hebrew is a Kush, right? Kush, like um, the Kemet, has its upper and its lower regions. Most people only know of lower Kush. Lower Kush is like the Meroe and the Sudan area. Upper Kush is what we know more today as the call to Ethiopia, right? So it said, that's why it says right here, compass the whole land. Those are the whole land, right? Because they already pre kind of anticipated that how people will say Kush. Well, Ethiopia is not Kush and Kush is not Ethiopia. Because they're going according to European scholarship that has done the very same thing that Jabari was talking about, how they're trying to dismiss, you know, African and black involved in it. Sometimes we unconsciously would do the same thing. And I'm saying that they do this often with Ethiopia very unconsciously because we have not gotten into, you know, deeper discussions like Jojo Capone and others also here like Brother Sanchez was calling for. Hey, Deonta is one of them. Um, I, I just sent a message to so I'll get it back, but I was just saying uh, yeah. so those lakes and yes, Victoria Falls of course in uh, yeah. Zimbabwe, and of course the land mass was Shaka Zulu and them was from, so you can yeah. speak So we, yeah. we, you know, they, they make us seem like we was weak, but we can speak on our Zulu tribe type um, um, tribes that, that, that Dessaline and certain people like that, you know, or the Nat Turners, you know, we, we can, if we want to look at that as like one, one bloodline, you got the weak and you got the strong. Yes. And some of us might be weak in some arguments. Like I think they're, they're, they're reasoning to really promote Ethiopia proper light, right? At least from what Jabari said in that whole, that, that Zana point about Christianity, I was waiting to see if anybody could kind of rejoin it. No one really could, you know, because I don't know whether, because Jabari is like the Floyd Mayweather, Sarnetta says, so no one could really rejoin that particular point right there and it's not to take away from his strengths he has his strengths in certain aspects i'm not gonna say all things comedic but i know that's what he aspires to and i hope he reaches that aspiration right and others would recognize that and say well i know you know about this so let me ask you 
right? I think it's time that they really need to have other scholars that have gone into linguistic aspect and can fact check the Europeans. Most of them can't fact check. They just have to accept what the Europeans have given, but they can't really go into a deeper level of what the Europeans have translated, whether from Kemet, the majority, or from Ethiopia. They, they, they never want to highlight our strong people. You know what I'm saying? We got some brothers that's on here saying that Nat Turner wasn't real. And, 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 you know, we just, it's, too, it's too much distractions, bro. Like, so we got to... The people that even look like us mm. that, that 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 seems to have an issue with being one of us. You see what I'm saying? They they suffering from that. They like they doing everything in their power to not attach themselves with the motherland when we know scientifically that birthplace of civilization started there. So we are all yeah. descendants from there. All right, all right. That was Jojo Capone and Jabari uh, Osaze, yeah, so, all right, and that's from uh, Reasoning, I think it's on um, the 29th, 29th, actually today is Malaku Bay and Dr. Malaku Emmanuel Bayan's 123rd Earth Day, very, very important, man, but give thanks, give thanks. Yeah, so that right there was just... um yeah, we thought we could have dealt with this, but we had to just connect some of those dots. We're going to follow up is on uh, Tobia, the Tobia and the Ethiopia and the, the, the Tobia Ethiopia connection. I'd like to touch on that Tobia and Ethiopia connection a little bit more on that as we um, as we move forward. Aksum area Tobia, right? The, the primordial name for Ethiopia, Tobia, right, yes, now that's, that's, that was what we was, was going to start out, right, we was going to start out with that right there, but then as we he heard the other point, right, you see what said Ethiopia, and then Mark is Tobia, 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 right, Ethiopia, Etopia, even the Hebrew, Etopia, which means good, like the good, right, the good land, and to just answer the Jojo point from a biblical perspective and then look at the rivers that we have in Africa, we have the Gion, Gion. Third river is Hidekio, right, which goes toward the east of Assyria. That means a real Kushite, Ethiopian, ancient presence is not just in what's called today Africa, but Asia, as we say, Afro-Asia. And the fourth um, the river is Euphrates or Euphrates, right? Because we have an Ethiopian ancient. It's like black man been everywhere, man, historically speaking. But enough on this right here. Give thanks, brothers and sisters. And also we have a public event, you know, coming up for Dr. Malaku Emmanuel Bayans for his uh, for his birthday, his Earth Day. Um, it's going to be on a Zoom platform. And hopefully we can have also more. You know, to get into the details, speaking with the Ethiopian World Federation, 1900th birthday, 29th of April. This year, 123rd, here in this 2023 year, birthday, Dr. Malaku Emmanuel Bayan. You know, so we speak about these colors and this history, this connection. And we black Americans or Afro-Americans, when I say black Americans, I'm talking about in the Americas. Americas is North and South and the Caribbean, all this is the America. That's why I said we all black Americans now, you know what I'm saying? On that level, check, check, right? And this was more of the ancient view of it, right? And here representing, yeah, you know, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Yeah, that's a lot of Bella Cross. You see even the, the ancient Ethiopic black Kabbalah right there. But Shalom Chabarim, Shalom, this is Ras Ayadonis Tafari. This is Ayadonis, this is Yad in here. We approve of this message, LOJS.org. Check out the live stream, Rastafari Israelites, also here on the Rastafari Jews. LOJS.org, Shalom Chabarim, Shalom.